the VC show. Let's go. What's up? What's up? This is VC with the VC show presented by Caesar Sportsbook. And you see who I have here. Kalo, Kyle Lowry, Toronto's own. Well, he's one of Toronto's own because, we, I mean, there's Drake too, but he is Toronto's own. He played like 20 years in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Hey, that's nine, nice. that's nine, nine years. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the original, we're on the, with the original all lifetimer Toronto Raptor greatest rap. Okay. Kyle, appreciate you as always. I mean, you know what it is when we, we get together, obviously, on, on the golf course. And uh, you, know, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. And and I, I just felt like, you know, it, it was time. I mean, I know, you know, you're, you're in Miami, but obviously our paths crossed because, you know, of our times in Toronto. But we want to talk about a couple of things first, like uh, that hat of yours. And explain to the people. Yeah, uh, boy, I keep it close. Uh, so, uh, so for you guys who don't know this, uh, Cal has a um, a golf bag line called Custom Seven, yeah. and uh, I was uh, he, he, he I was honored and, and, and given the opportunity to be a part of his starting seven, uh, meaning guys that he he you know he wanted to kind of represent his, his his line, and we created this unreal piece here of my career basically, and. Uh, we were playing in Tahoe, what? Um, oh, I'll show the other side too, sorry. We were yeah, playing yeah. in and Tahoe and then- So, you know, my, my favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Part, you know what I mean? The favorite part of the back, the shoes and then the Sydney, you know, if y'all can't see it, 2000. the Sydney up top, 2000, yeah. the gold medal. Now, I think that's the favorite part of the bag and the shoes. You know, we all know the boys, you know, that's that's just my favorite part <laughs> of the bag. But yeah, well, it was like, what, last, last year? We talked about this uh, and- uh, it might have been two years ago, but no, uh, maybe it was last year. But we talked about it, and you know, finally got with your guys, and we created, uh, we came up with some 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 cool ideas. And it's one thing, like we said before, talking about it and seeing it on 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 in an email and whatnot, and actually seeing this of you presenting that bag, and I, I use it in Tahoe, and it was just one of the dopest things, man. Tell us about how that started. Um, you know, how you were, were introduced it, you know, we know, I know for a fact, and I think a lot of people know your love for golf. Uh, you're yeah. always down for a round of golf, whether it's um, locally, um, internationally, <laughs> but tell us how Custom 7 came about. So Custom 7s came about, um, you know, after we won a championship, I have a, my, my former Adidas rep, now part one of my partners in uh, Custom 7s in Madison, Orangeville, she was like, I want to get him a gift. I want to get you a gift. And, you know, she talked to some people and she got a, a guy, Bram Goldstein, which you know, and, Bram, yeah. and Bram, my other partner. And, you know, he's very creative. He's did a lot of things for you know, Adidas and other companies. And he's like, I'm talking about creative. And, like, honestly, they was like, I want to get you a great gift. She was like, I want to get you a gift. I think it'd be awesome. I know you love golf. I didn't know what the gift was until I got it. And I'm going to grab it, honestly. Yeah, go so for it. I'm going to grab it real quick because it's in my office. It's a little bit bigger, but it's, you know, the original mm. Custom 7s golf bag. It's huge. It's massive. It's the trophy. It has my logo, the original Raptor on it. You know, it's a bunch of stuff on here. But that was the uh, – it was like the trophy, right? It was right. It was basically the trophy. It was a gift to me, you know, that she wanted to give me. And um, it was like, wow. And it was completely customized by her. And, you know, and then uh, during the Kobe year, uh, Bram, you know, came up with an idea like, hey, you know, I want to. I want you to be an ambassador. I want to start. The, I want to start a golf bag company. Um, I think it's something that where it's different. I want to tell the story of the person, of the person making the bag. I want to tell that story. I don't want it to be a um, bag at blah 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 with your name on it. I want to tell the story of. I want to tell the story of what this bag means, mm -hmm. what this bag is, what it means for this person, I, and. I was like, I don't want to be an ambassador. I want to be an investor. Um, I'm a. I'm basically, I want to be an investor of this because I believe in. It's a passion project. It's fun. It's something I enjoy. It's something different, right? You know, you have customized bags, and you know, but this bag it takes time. It takes. Effort. It's different. It takes, 
it, it's it different. You, you know, it took, you know, when we did this bag, that was just a gift. And we kind of just, and Bram, and we sat down and we got on the phone. was like, listen, let's do this. If we're going to do this, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's figure out how to do it. And it's been a process. Like we're, you know, we're slow rolling it. We don't be, want to be a flash in the pan. Like I said, we're still working on, we just got your bag. You know, it took a little while to get you guys connected, get us all connected to get your bag. But we're not. But once we got done, bro, it was like it. It seemed like that, and they held off. It was done, and they held it off for me till I got to to Tahoe. Yeah, we wanted to be like special, and you know, we made a few bags, and we made a a couple bags for some other. uh, Tell them, Steph. I saw Steph. Steph's bag is sick. Don't like to talk about it, but we made uh, Steph a bag. Yes. And uh, if he ever, you know, he wears Curry brand, but I, I, I felt like. When he broke the three point record, and me and Steph are, were good friends. And um, one thing about, you know, NBA and golfers, we're all, you know, we like it's like we're intertwined. A, yeah, for yeah. Sure. We it's like a, it's a it's a fraternity of us, right? Our league is a fraternity, but then you got the golfers inside of that our, our fraternity. And no matter past, present, you know, hopefully future NBA slash golf players, um, you know. So Steph and I have always had a good relationship, and I was like, I want to make him a bag. And that bag by far is the best bag we've made. I mean, I have I have five bags, your bag, but Steph bag. If you guys can just imagine, the side of the bag has like one, two, three with a cross. So we have every three point shot that he's made that he's made to break the record. You know, Sick, until, he, until he broke the record, and you know, I got, you know, put his kids' names on it, and you know, champ, three-time champion. Now I had to tell him I had to make him new bag because now four time, <laughs> four time, right? So I was like, I gotta make you a new bag, but you know, he he hasn't worn it yet, which I don't care. But it was a gift from you know myself, my company to him as, as a friend, and um, so that's how the bag company came about. Like I said, this it's a passion project. It's fun, and when we gave you your bag, is the reaction I care about. You know what I mean? Like, you guys, I don't know. I, I have the video, and I'll have, I, you know, I'll get the video sent to you guys. And he looked at the bag, and it was like him and this caddy, Marcus, was looking at the bag like, yo, this is crazy. And that's the story that you want to tell. That's the, you know, anybody can make a bag and put your name on it. But yeah. you, if you look at your bag, you got your seasons, you have your points, your rebounds, you know, I don't, not many assists. Yeah, not many assists, but it's a assist Chill, bro, chill. Stop <laughs> that, man. I told you about it, that. Just because, just because you got like thirteen assists in, in, in Raptor history to my three, yeah, yeah I didn't forget that. I didn't forget, yeah. like, yeah, Listen, I mean, so, and we put, you know, we wanted to put his teams on there. You know, we put the, you know, his. And you see, we had to put both sides with that, right? My, all my teams, okay. right? That's, yeah, we, that's it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, we can talk about that. All <laughs> oh, eight of them. The, <laughs> we got his high school right there. You got it. You yeah. know what I mean? We put, his school, we put the, you know, even though I can't really support the that school, but we got that this school, school down. Yeah, that that yeah. I I wanted national championship to get you guys. You know, well, whoa, whoa, my, whoa, 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 whoa. Your, hey, school, hey, your school, your school, your school. Yeah, we yeah. won't talk about that because yeah, but I was I was there too. <laughs> and then hey, but he and then uh, well, can, well, would you actually say this? Say this this time. What's that? You actually did me another solid um, and put my my favorite NFL team. I like Tom Brady. So who does he play for? I wish he played for the Eagles. But he plays but for the the team the Buccaneers. The Bucks, I got you. Oh, the oh, what? <laughs> Buccaneers, you know, the Buccaneers, something like that. No, wow. uh, my Bucks, Tampa Bay, baby. Shout out to the Bucks. Yeah, you know, shout out, you know, shout out, Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but that's how the bag company came about, man. It just, you know, it's it's something that we just have fun with and. Whenever we get it going and we're, you know, we're, we're trying to make it where, you know, we're slow rolling it and we don't want it, we want it to be people that we want to have it. Then we put it out to the public and right. let it be accessible to everyone. So for right now, you know, we just, you know, we, we just looking forward to getting a couple more bags to, the, you know, our starting seven and, um, you know, some of my friends and, you know, just building, building a brand. Well, I want to take a roller coaster ride. I know, and, and and ladies and gentlemen, work with us because this is how it how it happens and how it works. When I'm with Kalo, as far as like how we talk, how we operate, we talk golf, then we talk sports and everything else in our life. That's just yeah. how it goes. Yes, so I'm gonna start there, and then hopefully everybody follows in and, uh, and and enjoys the conversation. But 
you let, when did you start picking up golf? Like, I mean, we talk about you talk about the it, 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 you know the camaraderie between athletes in all sports. Like Tahoe, we played in Tahoe. We played in Tahoe for a lot of a lot of years, and we have yeah. some cool memories and some great yes. stories for everybody. Particularly, my my favorite is you know every year on the <laughs> on, on the first tee, you know how we act. It's like you've been in 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 in, in championship moments. I've been in big games been at the free throw line, it's whatever, you invite it. But it's something about being on the first tee and they introduce you and you got to give that wave, that nod, or whatever it is you do, and then stand over the ball and hit it down the fairway. <laughs> like, talk about that. Like, you know, it, well, first of all, talk about when you started and where okay. you are as a yeah. golfer because I, I, I think it's cool to see, like, that doesn't happen when you're just yeah. playing arbitrarily, like yeah. just randomly playing. But when you're playing in a tournament like that, it's totally different. Yeah. So I, uh, you, you met Dave just through my high school. Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played golf with him. You know, older, older gentleman. You know, he's you know, playing golf is you know a long time. So, as you know, when you first get in the league, shout out to Dave. Do, yeah, shout out Dave. All you do is work out when you get in the league. All you do, you twenty. I, I mean, I was twenty. I got a league my my rookie year twenty. I was twenty one twenty, and all I wanted to do was work out, work out, work out, work out, work out. That's all I did. And Dave's like, "Yo, you gotta do something else." And at the time, Tiger was video game, so I was, you know, at the time, I was 20. yes, I was, I was playing the video game. You know, you get that. Everybody who was watching this that played the Tiger Woods game, and I don't know if Rory's game has it, but it has that like perfect shot, and it's yes. Like, not quite the same. It's no, no, not quite, not the, quite the same. But yes, no. So I, I was, I, I played the game just as I was a Tiger Woods fan. You know, I was mm -hmm. like, man, I'm so proud of Tiger Woods. So he's like, you gotta get a hobby. So he's like, you know, just come play golf. I always I love Tiger Woods. So I'm like, I watch golf, and everyone at the time growing up loved Tiger Woods. So we went out to a course, public course, uh, Indian Creek uh, in Jersey, and so we go play, and I. Now, I'm not that great now, but I was trash. I was, and I'm okay right now. Listen, I was trash. Listen, that, day, that day, that Saturday, I, I played like I was, listen, I, all right, we'll talk about that later. I was trash. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about I couldn't hit the ball up the tee. Right, right, I'm right. Going, but it was that one shot that, okay, you hit two, three bad shots, then you hit one good shot. You hit five, six bad shots, you really frustrated, then you hit a great drive. Something and, uh, that brings you back, sucks you right and, back in. And, and then you make a putt or something like that. You you just and like yo, I got it. And then so I just kind of fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of you know throughout the first couple of years in the league because my passion and my my progression of my life and my career was more focused on basketball. Mm -hmm. Like basketball was like yo, this is gonna be my money maker. I, I, I like you know, and I, I tell people all the time like, listen, business will come. You know, and I was so focused on basketball, like basketball, basketball, basketball. But I sporadically, you know, threw in golf here and then golf here. And then at the time, Taylor May was, was with Adidas. So I was getting free clubs, you know, I was getting free gear. And, you know, I was just trying it out. And then I kind of just started to take it up and started to play. And, you know, in Memphis, I would go out and play. And Dave and I was watching it. And Dave would come down, we'd go play in Memphis. Then we, you know, I got traded and we would go play in Houston, better, better weather. And I just got into it, and you just love golf. And it's just like something like, yo, I could play this game till I'm 70, 80 years old. And and the fact that I'm on the course and I'm watching gentlemen, older gentlemen, you know, drive the ball 200 yards. Hit their Center of the fairway. Shot, hit their second shot, 195. The hole is 410. That's 395. They chip it close and tap in for a par. And I'm and, and I'm driving the ball. I'm dropping three out of bounds. And I'm dropping five. And I'm trying to hit it over the tree and hit a cut in the draw. And I'm like, yo, this is – and the fact that you can play a game with a man, a, a man that's 30 years older than you, 10 years older than you, uh, 10 years younger than you, which my son will be much better golfer than I am, you know, I just I already said I'm trying to set myself up so when it happens, everyone knows. You've already that. put it out there. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I'm just letting them be. You know, I'm getting them lessons and and you know, it's just it, it was just you know that that love and it's like basketball. And as I got older and as I got more mature and 
I was just like, yo, this is a great game. And I'm not, you know, I'm still lifting weights. I'm not, it's not pounding on my body. And people may think golf isn't an athletic sport. You kind of use your athleticism. And if you guys never walked a course, Oui. Go walk the course and play around in golf anywhere. Hey, I tell cold. people, I tell people all the time, walk a course as a bad player. <laughs> <laughs> you, you feel what I'm saying? As opposed to a good player, good players they're gonna, you know, if you know, straight, par fours, maybe. you're gonna you're gonna hit it straight. Whatever you still, you know, four shots maybe. Right. Exactly. Bad player, so, eh, not so much. Yeah, like you can go, you know, it could be Tahoe, Lake Tahoe, you know, Edgewood Golf Course. It could be. It's it's a four 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 mile four point two nine miles I think I walked on one day I or feel it like be, longer than that or it could be or it could be a five point five if you're going right left up, you know yeah, it could be a long walk if you have and, to scramble and, and yeah basically oh, we, you know we play a shamble I like a shamble better I like a shamble Facts. Uh, but that's why I started playing golf and and to your second point of there is nothing more intimidating than a golf shot as a non-professional golfer and they like i don't care how much golf you play in the first that six time whatever how many all-star gold medalists blah 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 da, 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 and a guy and there's one guy out there that does like the little rhyming from north philadelphia born and raised. yes and yes fans, i know exactly what you're laugh, talking about. and the fans laugh and they like eh, and they go and you gotta go here and it goes like this silence and you step up to the ball. And I'm going to just tell y'all the first. The, so I don't know if he ever told y'all. I don't know. I've been. A, so Vince, first year, you know, I'm like, yo. Oh, you know, my I, God. Yeah. I think, yo, you know, make sure you put Vince in my group, you know, whatever. <laughs> so we we go off. We, you know, they I go off. With, I, we were with Patrick Peterson at the time. You know, Pat was. Everybody's like, yo, he's so serious. He's, he's like, I'm trying to win this. And PP, shout out to PP. He was serious, but he actually was, you know, relaxed a little bit. He hit like a, he hit like a driving you know, iron. You remember it was a driving no, iron. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that joke was like, right. So I go, and this is our first time, you know. So, so I hit an iron, like a five iron. It's five not iron. iron. I'll never, hole. hey bro, I'll never forget it. It's five iron. It's not an iron hole, people. Fact. It is not an iron high. <laughs> so I hit an iron. I'm, you know, I hit it. I hit it in the fairway. Vince goes, and they do Vince car. You know, Miss Half Man, Half Amazing, blah blah. Everybody. And I'm standing back there like, all right, you know, just be easy. You know, me and Vince have played rounds before. Right. Like, you know, I'm, you know, if you, I'm like, yo, yo, Vince, like, you know, I'm cheering for him. I'm like, you know, take your time, swing easy. Vince goes, he takes it back, swings hard, poof, ball goes right, right into the, just into the, this, you that, know, the right, tr- that oh, right tree, yeah. Goes in, whatever. I'm like, ah, shoot. Oh, okay. You know, it's, you know. All right, we'll get it back. So we walk in. The, we walk in down the fairway. Everybody, me, Vince, PP, Herm Edwards. I don't know if anybody. Knows Herm. <laughs> oh yes. So we, he like, I see all you suckers. You guys using irons. You guys are, and I'm like. He calling us all all kind of names. All kinds of names, names that I'm not gonna say on this yeah, show. Yeah, that's a fact. We can, family yeah. friendly show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah, just going, yeah. but I'm like. Coach, you call I was like, that's the thing? curse, like out, out loud, yeah. bro. Yeah, but you know, I was in a fairway, Vince. You know that first hole. I was in that first. Yeah, it was we, we figured it out. But if there's nothing, I play. I said I play in front of forty thousand in in in, in, in uh, Syracuse Dome, and, and I played in championship game, and I played in gold medal games, and I, nothing compares to the that shot. And I, I always ask my caddy, I was like, you think professionals get like that? He's like, yes, all the time. So I didn't. I don't feel as bad, but right. They don't year, show I, it. They don't show it. I feel. They don't how'd you feel it. this year? I felt the same. <laughs> it just. It's just. This is how it goes, man. Doesn't matter how many. It's years, just, this is my fourth year, and shout out. To, shout out to the American Century Tournament NBC. Yes. Thank you guys for inviting us. Man, and straight up. Letting us come out and, and it's yes. My answer is yes already for the email that they sent. Yes, I'm. I'm I want to come back. It comes and like. You know, March, February. It yep. doesn't take more than two minutes for me to respond. Yes, I'll be there, and then I book my hotel right there. So yeah, yeah, we're there. We're, we're there. there. So yeah, that's that. But man, you know, we always talk and, and and have a good time on the course. Like I said, y'all, you don't understand. Like <laughs> it's just fun times. But I don't think we've ever had a conversation. Uh, I mean, yes, we have, but I don't think we ever had conversation. You know, in front of you know, for other people to hear us talk about our time. 
our, our, our time and especially particularly your time uh, mm -hmm. in Toronto and right. uh, you know um, and I'll, I'll tell a cool story and I know you're gonna remember it but the one thing uh, you know why I have such appreciation for it, outside of just being friends longer than that what a proud moment for me is for sure watching you you guys win that championship and I remember sitting up top with with T Mac like you know I think back to my years and you know the ups and downs good bad times big moments, tough moments that I've missed shots and all that. And Mac is like, I can't believe it's about to be a championship going to Toronto. Oh, and yes, it, it was, it was just a, a, a amazing feeling. It just gave me chills and I have chills now just thinking about it, watching it, not only for the city, but for you, because I knew you and, and for Nav, for those who don't know Nav, Nav's dedication to, Toronto basketball from day one. This man, you know, Nav Batia, look him up. Super fan, he's known as. This guy has never, had never missed a game until recently. Because yeah. of, I think it was because of COVID. It was COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was yeah. his first time. And I'm talking about, when I talk about a man who was heartbroken, and for me, his streak, I was heartbroken for him. He, <laughs> I, I'm sure you know, he checked out of the hospital uh, to, try to, get to make sure he made, made it to the game on a game yeah. day because he was sick and it's just like his dedication. But nevertheless, you know, I remember walking down the arena and, you know, you know, you know how it goes, you know, with, yeah. with, with me and that. So I, it gets, I, it gets, you know, it's, it's sticky. So I, I just remember I, I, we're walking out, walking on the floor, you guys, you had just come back out to sit down and do an interview. And I, I you know, I saw you and I was proud of you. We talked, whatever. And one of the coolest moments that I had a great appreciation for is that, when, when I, was, I was like, man, I'm proud of you. Good job. You know, enjoy it, whatever. The thing you said to me was like, man, come sit down and do the interview with me. And it was a cool moment, but obviously, you know, and I, you know what I told you. I was like, nah, I'm not taking nothing <laughs> from your no, moment. No. Uh, this said, is your I, moment, you know, because, yeah, you know, know. I, I was like, you know, I, you know, because I didn't want people to really think, oh, he trying to, it was nothing that it was genuinely happy for you. And I, I had a great appreciation. And I don't think we ever talked about that or I ever said that, but it was a cool moment because like, I knew where that was coming from, from yes. you. I, I knew where that was coming from. And it's always a debate about greatest Raptor. And it's always a debate about who did this, who did that. And you know me, you, I say it to you all the time. It's never been said out in public. You are one of the greatest. You are one yes. of the greatest Raptors yes. ever to do it because of what you, you, the championship you brought, because you've been there a very long time and, and what you've accomplished. Yeah. What you've accomplished, you deserve to have that, to be in that conversation. You deserve for people to crown you as that. And, you know, it's never been any sweat off my back. You know me, but yeah, and right. I don't go on social media to have to do this, but this is my opportunity. Like, you know me, I feel like you are one of the yeah. greatest. And, and I appreciate people yeah. saying, oh no, Vince is because, and I know how you, I know how, I know your rebuttal is gonna, what you're gonna re re rebuttal back, but you, you know, they talk about what other guys have done there, you know, I know Bosch and, 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 and you know, some, some people give Mac, whatever, but you deserve to, be to you know, from me, from me, yeah. you know, because I know people always want to hear that. And I don't I don't really go on social media to appease people, but this right. is my chance for us. Because we, 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 like I said, we play all the time, but we... We, we, we friends. We, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I want to just give you your love and, and, and your flowers for that because I feel like you are, you know, right there, you know, up there. I, if, I, and I tell people, if they, I, I tell my family... They're going to do a statue. Why not do a statue of the both of us? You doing what you, you know, you throwing a lob and uh, whatever, you know, no, something creative, you yeah. know, whatever. But, you know, I, that's just me. I said this, and, and a lot of people don't know how our relationship even started is we, it was through, tw through Twitter. And I reached out to <laughs> It was basically, I reached out and it's like, man, listen, I appreciate it. Like, it, it, everybody will say this, that, and the other. But Toronto was put on the map because of half man, half amazing. I don't care what nobody says. We, 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 you know, we know Mighty Mouse. Shout out to Biggie, my vet, vet. Shout out that I wore his jersey, you know, for a, I was his, that was his original jersey that I wore. So shout out to Biggie, you know what I'm saying? You know, Dame Sotomayor, one of my, my real life vet, one of the, still up to this day, someone I appreciate the most. But Toronto really was put on the map from Vince Carter. And we have a mutual friend that we talk about all the time is Alvin Williams. You call him Al. Oh, shout out to Al the Book. Yes, shout sir. Shout out to Al, as always. And I just feel like, you know, Toronto, and I, you said it was for the the, the city, and that, but it's for the country of Canada. Facts. You know, 
I said that in my interview and in my in my post game, I, and I said, shout out Toronto, we bring it home. Canada, we bring it home. And if you guys don't know, Canada is massive. literally massive. And <laughs> to this day, I'm sure Vince can't go nowhere without a Canadian say, Vince Carter, I'm from Canada, I'm from. And it's just the Perhaps. passion that they have for for their their sports and for what we've done, what we did. And the reason I, I asked you to do the interview and it wasn't because of like it was true, genuine love. Like, yo, Thanks. I know. It it was because like, why wouldn't I have the man, one of the one of the people that helped that really put this thing on the map? Man, come on, man. I got Vince Carter. That's my first and foremost, that's my friend. Mm-hmm. That's my boy. That's my homie mm-hmm. before all this. But mm-hmm. second, he probably is the reason He's the greatest rapper to me. You know, yeah, everybody will say it, but he put this thing on the map. Yeah, we got Damar, you got Kawhi, you got Bosh, you got Damon, you got a lot of, you know, Mac, you got Mac, all these people yeah. that say was this, that, and the other. But if it wasn't for you, Toronto would still be, you know, you know, you know Drake with the six eye, you know, it, it might, but you put it on the map and we appreciate that. And that's why I said, yo, come to this interview. It's because I'm able to say, yo, don't forget about this guy. Don't forget about this man, what he did. You know what I mean? Like, don't forget about the the time he put in his organization, the sweat he put in his organization. Yeah, it may not have a fairy tale ending, but that's business, that's basketball. No one's no one dwells on that no more. And you know, me and you have plenty of conversation. Mm-hmm. I I'll say this and I don't know if anybody ever knows besides the people that I tried to get Vince back with us at one point. I wanted Vince, and I was trying. You know, we had conversation. We, had- we 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 tried to get it done. It didn't work out. Business, you know, didn't happen. You know, some you know whatever happened, and it didn't work out. But I was like one of the biggest advocates to try to get him back in Toronto, and Vince was all in. So any people that think Vince wasn't all in coming back to Toronto is bogus. He would. He was. We was working on trying to get that done. Now, just so everyone knows. We were trying to get that done, and we'll keep, you know, like I said, business is business. It didn't work out. I think the biggest thing for me is I was there nine years um, in, in, in nine, playing for 15, 12. Yeah, 9, 15, 22, you know, all that stuff. And and I said this, and, I, and I, I, I've gone on record, and I'm going on record again. I will retire as a Toronto Raptor. One day contract, one week contract. Maybe I'll get like a ten day. They can give me a little bit more extra, you know, the, the way the cap going up at the time. You know, hey, thank you. You know, You're I, thinking. You're thinking. Hey, I still can do this now. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, man. Uh, and I will, like I said, because that's the place that I I I grew the most as a man, as an individual, as a basketball player, as a father, as as just a overall overall human being. And and you can say the same because that's the situation where you grew and. You know, yeah, it allowed me to take the next step because of what I endured and and, and, and was a part of, yeah. and, and and being in, in in the forefront as a, as a player. And they were like, "Oh, but he he did this." I mean, I played with a different point guard. I played with Jason Kidd. Guys, like, what are you like, talking about? No, that man made the game easy. But I learned how to to be a, a player. I learned how to. I grew up there, you know, as a, an adult, you know, as a as a young man to an adult. So to an adult, right. yeah, and and it was just. You know, like I said, it's yeah. just the the business of basketball, and it's, yeah. it's skewed it's skewed in some people's mind, and that's that's a topic for another day. But you know, yeah, like the, the love, like it. Hmm? Jay's kid's a golfer too. He's a golfer. Big yeah, golfer. Kid. Big golfer. Big yeah, golfer. but yeah, like like I said, the the Toronto thing, and and like I said, we as guys that jet as men who play for that franchise, play for that city, play for that country, it's something that we do take pride in, and. It's something that me winning a championship in 2019 wasn't just for me. It was for everybody that helped that get there. Because no one, including myself, before I got to Toronto, would ever thought Toronto would get a championship. <laughs> and that was my goal. And I said this a long time ago in one of my interviews when I first signed there. My goal was to win a championship, be a part of that franchise, and, and help it and continue to, to grow. Now, like I, 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 you know, you guys know Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet. OG, they, those are my guys. OG, those are my guys. Those are my little brothers. Like they, to this day, I still talk. To, I talked to Freddie uh, two days ago. I talked. I seen Pascal recently. You know what I mean? Like I still because I did pour so much into that franchise. I want to see them be successful in general. When we play them, I want to win, of course. And, Absolutely. You know, uh, but 
I want that franchise to continue to get better and to do what he's doing, you know, do what it does. And like I said, real quick, while we talking about that, Bobby, Bobby Webster, Masai Ujiri, got him out. You know, I got to shout out LT, you know, Larry, you know, Rogers Bell, because those guys paid me very handsomely and was able to make sure my family and my generational wealth will grow. And they, they believed in me. And, you know, everybody know me and Masai had our up and downs, but Masai is my brother and he's a friend of mine. Yes, we still, we still talk and I still got some, you know, ah, man, God damn, he should have paid me a little bit more. But he, you know, he, 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 he's supposed to. He's yeah, supposed but to. That's, you know, but like I said, you know, we both appreciate it. And, and for me, Vince, you set the precedence of how a great basketball player should be in Toronto. Appreciate it, man. Speaking of, and, and it was a proud moment for me because I got the opportunity to uh, present Scotty Barnes with the Rookie mm -hmm. of the Year. And you mm -hmm. talk about, you know, the the legacies and and and, and what's been built before him, and 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 they go through the stage. You guys win, and you know, down. And I, I, it's easy to say down year because they didn't do it back. They win it again, but they have this shining young star in Scotty Barnes, who like. You, you, you watched earlier, it's like, mm, man, this kid right. got a chance. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the year, I felt like it was understood. I mean, yeah, it, it was some competition, but it was understood that he was, he, you know, he, he, this guy's going to be the real deal. He's going to be the next. I'm going to age myself a little bit. I've been watching Scotty, I've been watching Scotty since he was a freshman in high school. And I watched him a few times. And when I watched him, I watched him and I seen him in Vegas because I have an AU program, Kayla Lee. Mm -hmm. I watched him a few times. And I was like, yo, this kid is amazing. And it wasn't that, it, I, I don't know if you, it, you know, people who watch Scotty a long time now, he plays the same exact way with the same passion. Like he plays with that same exact passion that he played with in high school. And I always thought in high school, he was a point guard to me because he was a passer. He's not a scorer. Scotty wants to pass the ball. I don't know if anybody knows that. Scotty wants to pass the ball. But to be able to be that guy who will shine bright, has great vets, Fred Pascal. He has great management, massager. He has great backing. You know, he has great fan base. The kid is going to be special, and I always thought he was going to be special when I seen him as a kid. I didn't know him. Like I said, I didn't know him at all. Like I had no idea who he was. Like personally, I never had a conversation with him. I, I never, never had a. But what he did this year. And you being able to present that trophy to him, it's like it was dope, man. Keep going, like the franchise keep going, right? Yeah, the city keep growing, hey, the, the country keep growing, and just hey, keep getting better. Hey, K, I, I, when when the NBA asked me about it, I was like, heck yeah, but I was literally trying to make sure that video was perfect because it was just a cool yeah. moment, like to bring. But I, I literally recorded and recorded and recorded and i was like okay what else what else y'all need you sure this like it was cool because i wanted to make it special for him it was a special moment you know and it was just it was just a fun idea and they just wanted to do like hey Scotty, congratulations blah 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 and i was like nah 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 no 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 let's 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 make it let's make it mean something and give some history to the organization which i i don't think for a long time outside of you know the glory year, I, no, it's not, I can't say the glory years, but the years, like the 2019 year of winning, 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 now they're starting to talk about Toronto like that yes. all the time. And, that, and I wanted was... to really give some love to, you know, the history of, like you said, keep it going, giving, showing love to the history of the rookie of the years. And now he's the next and bringing the name back to Toronto again, again. Yeah. It was like, yeah. goes away, kind of fades, but it comes back because of that. So it was just a cool moment. It's, I, I always said it's like, you know, everybody always like, you know, the years that you, you were there, you guys won games. Like, people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah. Play, listen, it's hard to win in the NBA. It's hard to win a game every night. It's hard to win in the playoffs. Like, everyone, you know. One shot. Yeah, I, okay. You know what I mean? Like, one shot I had to make. Like, it, I, I agree. And but it was cool. But it was cool to see Kawhi Hold make on. it. Listen. Hold on, let me, bro. Let me, it was me, cool, man. I was like, "Hey, man, I, I'm, I'm never gonna." You know, you, listen. You know, y'all know Vince is my guy, but at that time, I wanted to miss that shot because it was six. Oh, six. 
So, you know, I felt bad as as I got older and we got closer. I was like, damn, I wish he did. Nah, I wish he made that shot. <laughs> but to, to see it come true with the, the Kawhi shot and, and like everything to kind of come full circle, it really is crazy how all the, everything's kind of come full circle. If you think about it, right? Yeah. Like, it's a crazy story. But anyway, that day, first and foremost, you did the right thing by going to get your degree. Don't care. That's a, Sits that's in my a front door. Story. Sits at the front door of my house every every time I walk in or anybody walks in. They see yeah, that. Hey, listen, I don't care. You did. You made the right decision. And you still did your job and still almost won a basketball game. You know what I mean? Like, one shot. Back rim, you know, long. You know, yeah, yeah I ran hey. down the side. And you thought, you know, you would have thought we won the championship after one round. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, we, you know, when we go through the years of what we had and yeah, we lost to, I say, oh, listen, we lost to Brian. We lost to a hell of a Cleveland team, like LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love, and we lost, but you know, we, we finally broke through. We got a chance and I mean, we went all in, we had, we won it and we did nice. it for the, we did it for the city. We did it for the country. We did it for ourselves. We did it for our family and friends. But we also did it from we did it for the past, the present, and the future. Yeah, let's dig in a little bit. How tough was it for you um, moving on? Yeah, and and, um, and 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 talk about your time now in in Miami, and you know mm -hmm. what's it been like, and for you, just new opportunity. What? I, I know I, I asked this question, but I know it because I covered, you know, I, I had a couple of games this year and I had an opportunity to, to talk to Spo and, and, and talk about your influence in Miami. And he specifically <laughs> talked about you and your influence uh, on the team and, and how they want to play because of you. But how tough was that to kind of move on? It was tough. Um, we all kind of knew, though. And, you know, that year, the COVID year, twenty whatever year, 2021, whatever year, I don't know, all these years blend. You know, I, I had an opportunity to do it. during the season, you know, we started the season off in Tampa. It was just a weird, it was a very weird year. Talk about that as well. And, Talk about your time in Tampa and transition into that yeah. because I think that's in I remember well, us having a, a lot of conversations actually about you being in Tampa and, you know, a lot of golf, yeah. you know, you you know, chance to play some good golf though. Play, but anyway, go ahead. Play a lot, play a lot of golf. Play a lot of golf. I remember in Avila, you know, I play a lot of yeah, golf. Yeah, I know. I, I know how I, you go. Yeah, a lot of golf, a lot of golf. Um, but that year was just like, all right, we about to play. All right, cool. All right, um, all right. I gotta. Oh, I'm moving to Tampa. I'm going to Tampa. Like, okay, hold on. We where are we practicing? What we doing? And. You know, which was great. Masai, Bobby, you know, Kevin Di, you know, Kevin Di Pietro, everyone knows us, you know, we don't know shout out Kevin, you know, crazy yeah, Kevin. Kevin. Crazy we Kevin. were all we, we all were like trying to figure out what was between Tampa and Nashville. And we were like, Man, Tampa, you know, has a you know, the setup in Nashville was, you know, nice, but I think guys were like, Well, we play in Canada, let's go to Florida, you know, was, but it was a setup, the setup was well. It was weird, man. I'm like, yo, I got the I got my kids, like my kids, and it was COVID year, so I got to, I, I had to find a house, and find a place to live. I had to, like, you basically like, yo, this is a, like, you're playing in a whole different city. Did it feel like being? Never, did it feel like a road game to you, or did at some every night, point every, every? So night. at never at no point it felt like a home game. Man, we played Boston Celtics. It was, and it's still a lot of green, but it was green in that building, and it was only like. 5,000 people in there. It was all green. So it was just a road. You know, we had our our families and friends there, but like, oh, man, uh, okay, we're going to win this game on the road again. And it was just how we had to do it. And like I said, I found the like, luckily, luckily, Jimmy Rollins let me borrow his house. And, you know, Jimmy let me rent his house. It was perfect. It worked out. I figured it out. But that year was so tough for us. It was COVID. You had COVID. You had this, that. But that year... You know, at a, at a time, myself and Masai, we sat down. You know, Masai was, we were like, listen, what you want to do? And, you know, throughout that, like that year, you know, I was like, man, it was like 20 games in and whatever. I was like, I, I just want to finish this year with my guys. Like, I, I told Freddie this early in the year. Freddie, you know, I was like, I just want to finish this year as a Toronto Raptor. And I had a chance to be traded. And Masai came to me with some deals and was like, hey, do you want to go here? What do you think about this? And we were in constant communication. And I think we all knew that it was going to be time to move on. And like I said, 
at the end of the at the end of the season. You know, we could have moved on throughout the trade deadline, right. and it was, right, right, right. but it was like one of the seasons where we were in COVID, we weren't winning. It was tough. We were not home. We were just trying to figure it out, and it was like, yo, let me just finish this year out, and you know, whatever we'll, we'll go. And so Masai, we said, all right, we agreed, and we knew what it was. We kind of knew what it was going to be. Freddie was emerging, and for me, I'm the guy that's like, listen, I understand. I want the next guy to, to, to break all my records. Come on. And if you guys don't know, I love Freddie. That's my little brother. I, I'm passionate about him. Don't care. Like, he, I want him to break every record. I want him to get paid. I want him to do that. I want him to win the championship. He balled out. And, my, and he had an all star year, right? And then for me, I'm like, yo, let me, I'm, listen, I'm, oh, what? Yo, yo, little bro, it's your time. I'm out. Let me get out your way. So it was very tough and difficult to move on because it's an unfamiliar, it was an unfamiliar situation. But I always had a fond, you know, relationship with Spo because me and Spo, we were, we was in NBA Africa years before, and we kind of just hit it off. You know, he had his young son who, uh, you know, shout out to him. You know, uh, cancer free. He's in remission. Um, I don't know if you guys seen that. Shout him out. Shout him out. Yeah, that that the, the Spoelstra family. I'm um, super. You know. Um, so happy for that you know yeah it's amazing uh me and him had a prior relationship so me and spoke you know i've always like had a fine like and <laughs> i probably now like him coaching me man i can't imagine some of the stuff he said about me he's yeah, I'm like it's, yeah i can't imagine so I, me i act like i act like i played for him the whole time but um <laughs> Sp- spo is one of a kind people and he's really good um but the influence that he basically and i tell you and, we had a meeting in Vegas when I first, you know, agreed to the deal we signed. I said, look, listen, coach, I understand the Miami Heat culture. I understand the Miami Heat way. <laughs> I do. But I was like. I remember this, this conversation. This that's I, why. That's why I'm laughing. I remember I you telling me this. <laughs> I said, but I'm a grown ass man. I'm just a grown man thing. So, you know, you go. <laughs> but <laughs> Spo was so receptive and so like. I appreciative of it because I never do anything. I never did anything that harmed what they did harmed or with the heat culture. But it, it, at some point, like, you know, we changed the way we play. We changed the way we acted. You know, it's more, you know, if you look at Miami, you think it's like, man, it's not, we, it's fun. Spoh's actually makes bad jokes, but they're fun. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we got Malik Allen, you know, we got Chris Quinn, we got Karan Butler. I play, we, I play we got Malik. Ace, I know we got Malik. Anthony Carter. We got Anthony Boy, Carter. You know, we, we got, you know, we got guys and, and like, you know, we have fun guys. And one thing about them is they, they find these guys, the undrafted, the guys that are, and they try that they, they make them into players, but they, they get a little uptight. So my job this year, I was like, listen, I'm not that player. I'm in the locker room. If I see something funny on film, I'm laughing. And this song where something on film, you know, Miami culture is like, you, you would think, no, 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 no. It's like, nah, I'm going to I'm, I'm laugh. And, and Spo and our organization was so receptive. And we won 50 games for the first time since Brian, you know, and it's, it's, it's a testament to this, them, everybody being on the same page basketball wise and off the court. No one was uptight. You know, we came within one shot possibly of Jimmy making shots to make it into the finals and, you know, us being hurt, whatever that's, that stuff happens. We lost to the team that beat us. They were better than us. They beat us and that's that. But like Spo basically let me play and let he said, Kyle, all I want, I said, Spo, you tell me what you he said, I want us to be uh, more up paced. I want us to do this. I want Jimmy to. And my goal was to just, okay, cool. Let me figure out how I can make Tyler Hero better. I can make Bam Adebayo better. I can make Jimmy even more of a superstar. I can get Duncan Robinson going. And these undrafted guys, Max Schroes and, you know, Caleb Martin coming on the two way. Gabe Vinton, I, that's, that's my. Not, I watched him. Not, I, not I watched him in the partner. Olympics, bro. I watched him in the Olympics. I'm not saying that's like, but that's the next, hey, listen, come on. I'm going to give you all this game. Listen, this is what you do. I don't want to, I want every every little knowledge that I can possibly pass on to Gabe. I, I gave Freddie, and I still give Freddie whatever, like, game. I talk to him. I give Gabe, listen, let's, what are you going to do? Like, you know, let's go work out. I, I see this. And these guys, these undrafted kids, these two-way guys, they – they're just finding this niche and finding themselves. And all I can do as a pro is help them 
and that's all I want to do is help them because at the end of the day, I want them to be able to provide for their family like I've been able to provide for my family. All right, you you mentioned Jimmy, and uh, you know I <laughs> you laughing because there's a couple of things Jimmy and his brains, Jimmy and his cookies, Jimmy and his coffee, go. Jimmy and his brains. Which one, the new brains, the dreadlocks that he got? The the, the, the both. Did you see so when you see him with the locks, I, I heard about him. I didn't see him yet. I heard about. Okay, okay. my man. My dog, my my brother. I'm on. I, I talked to him on Facetime on Tuesday. I believe it was Tuesday, and I said, "What the? F- <laughs> you got?" He said, "He said, he said, he's on fire, yo. This, you know, it's fire." He said, "You know, I said, bro, come on. I ain't said nothing. I said, you out of you bugging, but you know, Jimmy and his." Jimmy, if you know Jimmy, if you if anybody in the world knows Jimmy, Jimmy's going to do whatever Jimmy, Jimmy wants to do. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, you ever see uh, Dream Girls? When Jimmy, Jimmy got, Jimmy got, Jimmy got, so, you know, that, you know, when Eddie Murphy did the jazz Jimmy. He, <laughs> so, so Jimmy with the locks and the braids, Jimmy is Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy with the cookies, Jimmy... He's he does make them. He bakes them. Yeah, I I, I, I hit a view him, and he talked about his, his you know his passion and how yeah. good he was with the cookies. And the I'm just curious. Ha- yeah, has he got has he gotten okay? So uh, Jimmy we, with the we, 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 we go bring PJ Tucker on one day. You got and just ask him about the cookies. Yeah, yeah, bring Tuck. Just get a conversation with PJ Tucker with the cookies and, and Marquise Moore. Jimmy would bring it to the table. You know, guys would have the cookies and everything. So he, he can he can do his thing with that. Jimmy with the coffee, dog. He got to chill. It's all day, <laughs> yo. Barista, listen, baristas, iced coffee, coffee during they need that walk through, coffee after walk through, coffee before a game. I don't drink coffee. I don't know anything about coffee, but I will say this. The amount of time and passion that he put into it, he puts into his basketball game also. So whatever he's doing with the cookies, do it. I mean, with the, sorry, with the coffee, do it. Because he's obviously doing something right. And Big Face is a, a reputable brand right now. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you no. Know, Face is a reputable he, he's, re- Hey, he turned it into something f- for real. And, and, and you got to respect it because he started in the bubble and he just kind of grew it in. He has, he could tell you about the beans. He can tell you about the beans from Colombia, Costa Rica, the beans from this. I'm like, okay, I don't know what the fuck my bro. But so it's okay, not yeah. it's just not all just talking. I mean, that means he's doing not research and he's up on it. I, I like that. I like that. He, he's very much passionate about it. Just like I said, it's like my golf. Like our golf is his. Our, our golf is his coffee. Right. Right. And, right. And right. wine. And he, in, in his wine. Right. His wine. Right. Is why. Hey, I want to double back. I want to double back on you. Uh, something you said about giving game to players, and yeah. I have a question for you. And I and, I, and I'll speak my, my my side of it too. But what's your thoughts? So how how do you handle hearing your name in trade rumors? Because obviously, the longer you play, you're gonna always hear your name in trade rumors. And you know, if some some young guys who are who get their their chance yeah. to play in the NBA, or you know, hopefully some players are listening to it who young guys who listen to it who are in this these situations. How how have you handled it over the years? Just always hearing your name in trade room. You yeah. want me to go well you go first. Uh well for me, uh the one the 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 times I've been traded, I'm just being honest. I got traded from Memphis to Houston. I wanted to get traded. Mike Conley was the point guard. He was the franchise. I said, listen, I I need an opportunity. I was twenty three years old, twenty two, twenty three years old. Like Mike's good. Hey, listen, y'all right. picked the right point guard too. Mike did a hell of a job. Mike's one mm-hmm. of the, you know, one of my closest friends, good good friends, and yeah, another Memphis golfer. They, very good golfer. They, very good golfer. They picked the right one. They picked the mm-hmm. right guy. Like you know, unfortunately, whatever. I got to Houston. You know, whatever. You know, I had my my situation with Kevin McHale. I asked to be traded again. I asked to be traded. Got traded. Toronto. You know, I, I <laughs> the New York trade that was done. I was. In the house, just how we sitting right here. I had a bag right here to the right. Got another bag right here. I was just like, all right, we are telling me to go so I can go to this airport. And I'm out. And then, but, you know, that that being said, how I, how I handle it is I understand it's business. And, you know, I was, 
I understood this thing was a business from literally draft night of my going into my second year when they drafted Mike Conley. I'm at the I'm at the draft party at the Memphis Grizzlies draft party. You know, they, hey man, you know, kids, are, we're gonna pay you a couple dollars to come to the draft party. Boy, oh yeah, I'm gonna interact with the fans. But the fourth pick, the Memphis Grizzlies select Michael Conley, Michael Conley Jr. I'm like, you mean the point guard? <laughs> I'm like this. What that mean for me? Oh, he four. I'm number twenty four. Yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> so I knew about the business fairly early, and like I said, it was. I just tell those guys, listen, how I handle it is I don't, I don't pay attention to it. I, I understand. Listen, it's rumors until it happens. Yes, it's rumors until it happens, yes. and there's nothing you can do about it. If you know, hopefully, you have a good enough agent who's on it and in constant communication. But if it happens, it happens, and you move on. I say this: if a team, if a team trades for you, they want you. There's a reason they want you. There's a team. It's a reason they trade for you. You take it in stride and you move on. You be a professional because at the end of the day, you're still getting paid to be a professional athlete. Go and then to add to job. that, yeah. And then to add to that, you know, a lot of the talk, a lot of times, are scenarios. So people are trying to figure out what, what, you know, what they think work. Half the people who talk about the scenarios don't understand. It's not just oh, I can pick this guy from this team and put him in this time. The money has to match. So just it's just it's, it's so many different variables that. That 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 go that fall into this, and you know, I tell guys all the time, until you're moved, otherwise you're a part of that team, and you know, you just got to make the best of that until it's over. Because I was on a team with Alvin, we traded Al to Boston. Yep, yep. took him off the bus. Yep, traded him. Physical, <laughs> failed physical. Two days mm-hmm. later, he's back on the team. Like, what's up? Hey. It's like, oh man. So, like I said, it's like it just you you never know. And I, like I know it's a frustrating thing because you know you hear your name in rumors. I mean, trade talk all the time. You don't yeah. know how to, especially if it's the first time hearing your name. Like it's it is what it is, and I understand it. But it's just like I said, sometimes it's, it's trade rumors, it's trade talking, and so it is what it is. You know, and you've been you've been in this business long enough. It's crazy. The rumors and the trade scenarios, honestly, they come from people who make them up, and then the then the, then the general yeah. manager's like, oh, that, that might work. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's where the rumors come from. And people who make it up, they're like, oh shoot, that could do this. But so you just go with it. Like, uh, listen, uh, everything happens for a reason. I don't even like for, for a guy, if the guy was to get traded, listen, when you get traded, listen, good luck. Go be a pro. And I used to say this, like even even when like Fred and Pascal would send down, would get sent down, sent down for an assignment with the, the uh, 905. I would say, yo, go show them why you're not supposed to be here. Why you're not, you're, you should never go back. Why, right. you, why you're not supposed to be in the G League or right. D League. Right. Like, show them. Yeah. And that's when a team, you, all right, y'all traded me. Cool. I have nothing against you because it's a business. And then we move forward and I'm still a professional athlete. You, th- That's the biggest thing. You're still a professional athlete. I got a question, bro. And uh, yeah. I uh, I responded to this topic. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this a uh, couple of weeks ago. But you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What what uh, <laughs> what, what heard, are your I, thoughts? I, I I haven't been on social media, but I, I you know some I read it on Who Type Wear, and so I read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Just what are your, what YouTube is your thoughts? Person. Yeah, but now what's your thoughts about like you know what was said? <laughs> But what was said just, about you know Toronto is not a dis- just, just looking at my phone like you wait for you let me speak because okay cool about Toronto not being <laughs> a desirable place for black or African American for black for black athletes to play and it, it's just it, it's mind boggling to me because of all the guys that have desired to come play resign there success there I have homeboys black homeboys who have gone to Toronto and married out of there <laughs> <laughs> like and who live there so it's just it's just baffling to me of, but anyway what is your like dual, what's your thoughts a lot of dual citizenship people you know kids being born you but know, be, and, and, yeah now they're yeah so they're dual citizens now because of it so yeah I don't um I don't talk about others and you know what people say because I don't care to don't mm-hmm. care to respond to mm-hmm. anybody else because I, whatever. I do. I, I I am a black 
African American black black from 20th and Lehigh, North Philadelphia. I absolutely love Toronto. <laughs> I absolutely spent eight years of my career. Yes, I was. There was times like, man, I need to go somewhere else, and it wasn't because of being black. It was because of the situation. Being black. Is I like honestly I I lived in North York uh, I I seen black people all the time I seen first of all most there are more Jamaicans in <laughs> in Canada that's they might the the, the the Caribbean culture in in Canada alone is ridiculous Top and notch. and you just appreciate the the I what I appreciate it and it's kind of a melting pot. You know, it's uh, of Canada, and you you can find any race, like uh, any like any nationality mixed with any nationality in Canada. And sidebar, it's unbelievable. I have a sidebar for those <laughs> who are listening, and you're gonna agree with it. For those who are listening right now, if you've never had the opportunity to attend Carabana, make that a priority to attend Carabana one time. All right, I'm done. Carry on, Mister yeah, Lowry. Oh, you were saying. Ovo Ovo weekend is uh, this weekend, so you know you guys, you guys, if you want to go up there, you know. Another you sidebar: you If you ever get a chance to attend Carabana or Ovo weekend, you must do so, and you will learn a lot about Canada and and the people of Canada and the culture and what is actually walking around in Canada every day. Yeah, and how many uh, how many African Americans, aka Black people, who are trying to get into Canada to be in to hang out in Canada? Just don't have felonies. You can get it if you got a felony. You'll be all right. You, you, yeah, Outside of that. Outside that, but like you Outside know, that. Uh, let's go, Big Cat, Jamal McGlure, Scarborough, my guy, right? Love Big Cat. What is he? He's black Caribbean, Trinidadian. You know what I'm saying? Like Trinidadian, he is. he is. He's black. I don't care if you from you know the islands, whatever. I, if y'all get like to know said, him, you'll see how black he is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I, I, I don't like. I said I, I'm not even. I don't need to. I don't need to talk about anybody else, but my personal is I'm from 20th and Lehigh, North Philadelphia. Um, I love Toronto, and I I can go back there whenever I want, and I can literally feel very comfortable, not even being who I am, but being a black man. So, you know, that's that's my take on that. <laughs> that's my take I on like that. I like it. I like it. You handled handle that with so, Yeah, you handled that very well. Yeah, I did not. Nah, I, 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 uh, I, I, I see the video. Listen, I'm a, I'm a YouTube guy. Like, you know, you have a YouTube and it's just it, everything. So I seen it and I was like, I didn't even, because I seen a couple of people respond like, you know, whatever. I don't need, like, I'm not a social media guy. I don't want to, I don't care to talk about other people or talk about. Yeah, it was, it, it was more, yeah, yeah I mean, it was but, more so like yeah, the situation you, was just baffling to me. Like, it's just like, you know. Have you, have you ever lived there? Yes, there is a toughness because of the loonies and toonies <laughs> or you don't have at&t or verizon you have Rogers you have bell Bell. Or bell. yeah exactly there, there's uh, not a you don't have you don't have yes you have uh what's that <laughs> you have tsn you have uh sports ESP, net yeah sport net you know uh not really i want to talk about tsn we go tsn sport net Oh, sorry. That's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that yeah. other. Yes, TSN. Yeah, TSN. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> and Roven, if Roven seeing that, if Roven watches this, he going to laugh at that. Um, you know, you got uh, you don't have TNT. You don't have you know. You, but other than that, I mean, you adjusted to it. Like another lot thing, people like he talked about was the customs yeah. and stuff like. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's it's a it's a pain. In and the beginning, some... but it becomes a, your your everyday routine. It's just it is what it is. It's just like you have a lot of pains in the world, like live in the city, in, li live in New York City, live in Atlanta. Like it's 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 gonna be things like you know. So anyway, don't I, I mean it's just I'm yeah. doubling yeah, back, yeah, but it's just it, yeah. And and a couple of last things you we don't um, I want to go back and talk about what what was the feeling like? What was the feeling like for you re with your jersey retired? At you know that that Where? school you you that college you went to. <laughs> um I, I i don't remember where did you go to college All right, but I, I, I heard i heard i heard that you you got your jersey you know i guess you know at least i can make my symbol like this you gotta do uh i don't yeah i can just you know we just visa um how that feeling was is 
Um, that is my home. That is where I am. That is where I currently, I live five minutes from campus. And I just, I was fortunate, man. Like I was fortunate to be able to play with a bunch of guys who, you know, like really love the game and have passion for the school and for them to accept me, um, from being a, I don't know what I was, I was a terror back then and just let me rip and run and like, you know, just do what I do. And, you know, shout out to Jay Wright who just officially retired. You know, um, I wouldn't be, you know, here without him because, you know, we never talked about basketball. We just talked about, he always told me just to be a legit man and kind of, you know, that's, and you live by, I live by that being, and I don't know if people understand that, but being a legit man, like, yo, like, if you do something, fess up to it. If you have a, um, if something happens, just say you did it and move on and like take the responsibility of, you know, that action or whatever it is. And yeah, you, you might make a mistake. You might piss somebody off. And that's why I always try to tell the truth with what I, when I do interviews or I do things and I don't, you know, I just, just be a legit man. So that, that place helped me, but having my jersey retired was cool. And then being able to, um, you know, donate money back and get the locker room, you know, named and, and, and for a lifetime. Even when I pass away, the, it'll still be the Kyle Lowry locker room. Um, you know, it, it, that's that that to me, that's a legacy right there. That stuff, not just basketball wise, that's legacy for my kids, my, my Carter, my kid. You know what I mean? That legacy is, is theirs to continue to live on. Well, congratulations, man. That's what's up. I mean, I'm sure you appreciate you made it, college appreciate proud, regardless of, you know. <laughs> You know your decisions you made to go to college, but I understand why you're from the let, area. Um, hold on, let me, now, 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 no, no. Listen, now since we on the topic, real quick, it would have been that school, but y'all took somebody named I ain't gonna say his name because I don't know. You know, hopefully he's still successful. But y'all took a player. Well, I'll say his name because I don't know him like that. Quentin Thomas. Y'all took Quentin Thomas. I don't. You know, hey, listen, understood. You know what I mean? But I wanted to take a visit. But I was told, yeah, if you want to come to this great school, you got to just commit without taking a visit. Damn, dog. Like, can I can I see what North Carolina is like? But, you know, a guy named Quinn Thomas, he was very good at high school. Uh, I don't think he was my level at that time. But, you know, North Carolina took that guy, you know, Ray Felton. You know, Raymond Felton was, you know, like the guy. And, you know, I could have been back in a Ray Felton for a year and, been been my job and you know with it but you know mm. yeah, been, yeah. Been. Shout, out, shout out to North Carolina for helping me go to Villanova. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well we're gonna move on from that one. Uh, uh yeah. so the topic of thick has been thrown around at you before and uh you know I, I, I saw like the, the the interview with Danny Green. Yeah you, know, you say you use it to your advantage but how do you feel about it? Like, does it bother you? Does it, is it a thing? Like, you know, social media, it, it is what it is, but you it, ain't no little man. It, it, it used to bother me a lot. It used to get to me. It used to really get to me. I'm going to be honest with you. And now I don't care. Because Cause I see, bro, I see you trying to throw your, your, your weight around on guards all the time, bro. It actually works for my advantage, like you know. Exactly. Like, so it just took. I'm, so basically, you said it just took some time to embrace what you said because you didn't want to hear it, it like that. I I'm, I'm in my office right now, and this is like I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be a little bit cocky. Go for it. Just a little bit. For me, a, a man that's never been crazy athletic, thick, whatever. I'm looking at all time stills. Uh, all time something else, all time something else. Uh, uh, a 2016 uh, Rio basketball. I was supposed to have it, but I got it. I stole it. A um, couple all star rings, bag over there. A couple all star basketballs. Yeah, yeah, think think it's been good for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool with Ch it. Championship. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, you know, but that. Yeah, listen, just to I say a few. Now it's. Listen, y'all can create all the memes y'all want. It's gonna happen, bro. That's just that's just I, the world we live in. <laughs> I embrace it. I love it. You know, you guys. Uh, the, the the more listen, they say the more media talk about you, the more it is. So 
I'm happy. Listen, I appreciate y'all keep keeping me alive. Keep hope alive, brothers. Keep hope alive. <laughs> uh, a couple more things. So I'm, I wanted to ask you, and I always I, I like to ask guys who've been around for a long, how long you how, how how much long you want to play, brother? Um, I, I'm, a, I'm on my Vince like have I'm on my Vince card. So no, <laughs> no, there you go. Just what? So you're no. saying basically, I'm just gonna go till like you know, I until wake up I like can. I'm good until I can't and. When I think this is how I, I think personally is when your brain you tell your brain something, it starts to do it. So for me, I'll say, listen, I'm going till I can. And why not? Until I don't want to wake up at five, six in the morning to go work and out. Put the work in. Yes. Like I said, I, I did. I mean, I was late on the show because uh, I was finishing my second workout. And every year, I still find ways to be motivated. And. Last year, people, yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I don't respond to it. Like I said, I'm not even, I'm not even, I have my social media. I'm not even on my social media right now, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of, in the, I only did this interview because you my man. I'm I'm dark right now. I know. Bro, I know. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I know. I'm out the way. Like, I'm, I don't want to, like, I'm cool. I don't need to speak. You know what I mean? You my guy. But like, I find every year, I find ways to be to, to motivate myself. And right now, I'm even more motivated just because I had a chance to make it to another championship. I played, I'm in year 16. I got one championship. I've been to playoffs a lot, but there's something about that championship that I want another one. I, it's, it's just what I play for. I didn't play. I don't. Yeah. I played basketball growing up for free. Yes. The money is amazing. I'm telling you guys, thank I listen. I thank you. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. The money. Great. But I love hoop. I love basketball. I love the competitive nature. I love to just say I won. And I don't even get excited when I win. I get more I'm more I'm more mad when I lose than I'm happy when I win. Still love it. You still love it. So it's safe to say basketball is still here and golf is right here still. It it hasn't it hasn't done this yet. It's close. I'm not I, I'm still basketball is number one. But I got a 10.30 tee time tomorrow, so I got to move my workout up a little bit early so I can get back. <laughs> I'm going to work out up because I got to get it's, back. But it's the summer. But it's the summertime, so that's 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 cool. But it's like when that that's time is kind of yeah, right well, here I, during the when, season, that's when I, it's like. If I, if I, and it's crazy because I at my house, I have a simulator in my house in uh, Miami. So I said my son is – I'm more like trying to push my son to the point of like if he wants to play a little bit. But I use the simulator. You know, we have late nights, right? You know, as, as that. We have, yeah, we have oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, and you get on YouTube and you be like, hold on, let me get my – how do I get my shoulder to get back here? Bro. You know, I've been – I'm listen, sorry. I've been watching a lot. You know, we just talk. This is like – I know it. I know it. That's what we do. I'm on YouTube the other day. And I'm watching, I'm like, yo, I got to find a way to get my shoulder to get back. You know, I watched John Daly. Like, his his club, he could see his He could get that jump. I can, yeah, he, I ain't. I, I think my shoulder, like, just, like, I'm more worried about this left shoulder than my right shoulder. And my right shoulder. <laughs> the way you need for the jump shot. I got hey, my PT, like, yo, can you work on this just to. He's like, yeah, let's work on the right shoulder. No, my left. left. I need to get. It's, yeah, I gotta get this that thing. and then get that hip though. You gotta get that hit them hip so you know so it could you know yeah get no, through yeah. the ball open up. You know how to go. Yeah, we 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 talk about this shit in the course all the time. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, man, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate awesome. you as always. Uh, you know, you know, you you the bro, you the homie. Uh, and, you know, we we we. It's always a good time when we get together. But but uh, man, oh, thank bro. you very much for joining the VC show. Let's go, everyone. Check us out, man. Kyle Lowry, who's gonna play. 20 plus years I'm calling it now but until then we out we out appreciate you as always the VC show listen y'all come tune in watch it you know hopefully I you know, I, I lived up to the, the hype <laughs> <laughs>